Yo, what it do guys and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be focusing on Imperium's arc wings, arc guns and the newer elementals, the combinations, what's what and what we know so far. So to start off with, let's get straight into what's arc wing. So between all the arc wings that we do have right here, there's two that definitely stand out and they're mostly defensive uh, arc wings. The content within Imperium and the content within Railjack is definitely one to be challenged. So you are looking for survivability for mostly. Now, if it's all could go invisible whilst moving and had a bit more kind of going towards it, it would actually be a very good arc wing. However, as of right now, we're just slightly rolling it out. You can still take it so if you really want to. I'm just saying it's not one of the better two. And the same goes with Elytron. You don't really over need, overly need this as much. As for the two that really do tend to stand out, at least as of right now, is Amisha and Odinata. Odinata being more of like the base version, more of the welfare version, if you will, and Misha being the top tier version. When it comes to things like uh, Odinata, I'll just go and get my um, build up here on the screen. For the most part, you're just going to take survivability, as you can go and see here, basic health, armor, shield capacity. It's near enough what you need. Now, energy field is a good augment to go ahead and run in here. It'll allow you to go and protect your allies and give them shields as well on your one ability, which is called energy shell. Otherwise, range, efficiency, and power max as well will also go ahead and help out. And with a little bit of extra strength, just go ahead and bump some other values up. Um, disarray can go ahead and help out, but only when you're mostly getting missiles towards you. Um, things like most projectiles won't go ahead and do an awful lot. See, if I don't really tend to go and use that often, I'm better off just using my art gun. And as for repel, repel can come in handy. You can actually push enemies off of you. It will actually go and push them back, and then they will come to a halt ever so slightly. Um, I don't really tend to find myself using it often. It's mostly energy shell uh, that you'll go ahead and use an awful lot on Odinata. But this is more of the welfare version in comparison to, and the better of the uh, Arc Wings right now, Amisha. Amisha is in a very, very nutty spot. So the reason why we go and play with an awful lot of Arc Wing content, A, because Arc Wing content is definitely included within Warframe, uh, Warframe's Imperium, but number two, or B in this case, <laughs> um, when you first start Railjack, when you first start Imperium, your Railjack will be squishy. You will go ahead and notice that, especially because you're unfamiliar with the process of gearing up and what to do, how to put out the fires, and where should I go and put all my focus into what and when, and how am I utilizing my efficiency within these missions. So I do encourage you to have a very well-built-out arc wing, because going out there will help you drastically uh, as uh, later content comes in. And Earth Proxima, you should still be somewhat okay. It's going to use your rail jacket. It will be a little bit hard, unfamiliarized, like I said. Once you start hitting Saturn Proxima and uh, Veil Proxima, Arc Wings really do start to shine. Amisha is the best example of this. So looking at the kit of Amisha uh, and looking at the uh, upgrade of Amisha, what I'm having here is uh, health, armor, uh, extra power in here, duration, efficiency, range, flight speeds, because I do need to go and get from A to B nice and quick, and uh, extra strength in there. So there's an awful lot of flats. We don't have an awful lot of mods to go and play around with. I do believe at some point Arcwing will go ahead and get a bit more of an overhaul. I was kind of expecting it to be, uh, or to have had an overhaul when Imperium was going to drop, but it looks like things are going to come out in waves and we roll with the punches. Otherwise, things like Kinetic Diversion can go ahead and help, um, and things like Energy uh, Inversion can also go ahead and help for shield capacity. Even more protection should be good. But the build that I've got here has definitely been serving me very well. I've not really been coming across many problems unless I'm the problem because I'm not micromanaging my abilities well enough and I'm not paying too much attention. Uh, as a streamer, I will get caught up with the chat. Next thing you know, I'm dead and I'm like, ah, gotta blame the game, it's never my fault. <laughs> so um, starting off with Amisha and going inside, Vengeful Rush is a really good ability. It will make you invulnerable um, and every time that you go and take any kind of incoming damage, it will convert it over towards Warframe uh, or Arcwing uh, energy. So this will allow me to go and use the rest of my abilities with, with, with ease. Uh, there's two ways of definitely doing this. Number one, you can even go and hit in towards asteroids and so forth. And I would encourage doing that right at the very start. There's normally like a, a orange asteroid that you can just keep basically zooming into, like nut, nutting in towards it, like a, a trap fly you know, at a window. And I definitely encourage you to go ahead and do that just to start off with. Um, otherwise, you can go in and take incoming fire. Either and or works just fine. So use Vengeful Rush to go ahead and get all of your uh, energy up. From there onwards, you definitely want to go and get your Watchful Storm on. Now, your Watchful Storm is pretty much like how Revenant 2, his Mesmer skin works. Basically, anything that hits you, you'll take no damage, but it will consume a charge. 
So as you can go and see the number of drones in this sense is 23. Uh, 23.25, we round down from the 0.25. So I've got 23 drones, which means I can take 23 incoming damage <clears throat> and I will take no damage from it. Really, really good. Really, really good ability. As for the uh, next ones, Warding Grace, this is so useful. It's unbelievably useful, um, not just for you, but your entire team and especially people who are on board the Railjack. This will slow down enemies within a radius. So 640 meters anywhere around me, all enemies are going to be slowed down. You will definitely notice that uh, when you watch some people, you'll see, oh, you know, how am, how are they shooting them? Or why are they shooting them? Like, I can't seem to hit these enemies. It's because of this ability here. Warden Graze is very, very useful. You want it on near enough all of the time that you can have it on. And this would work well with things like Kinetic Diversion as a mod to go ahead and keep you uh, and keep it up for a long time because it is a drain ability. <clears throat> Excuse me. And you won't be able to go ahead and get uh, energy back any other way except from maybe like energy orbs or kinetic diversion and so forth and then we have benevolent decoy now benevolent decoy works really well with eventual rush if as you're taking damage and it's about to go ahead and run out you kind of want to do four two and you will press two right at the very end of your four so once you've got enough energy uh on the way back and you're happy with it um, if you do happen to fill up your bar just a little bit too quick and you're like, oh, I'm in a bad spot, you can either go and hit one or two. Um, if you do hit one, you can still go ahead and get health back with your two, um, even though your one is up, which is a little weird. I don't think it's supposed to work like that, but if it does, that's great. But sometimes uh, this doesn't always happen. I won't always get health back if I do have Watchful Storm up, but sometimes I do. And then Warden Grace to go and slay down enemies. So the entire kit of Amisha is just perfect. And I mean actually perfect. If anything, too good for Empyrean. Uh, it really showcases um, how strong Arcwings are right there. Now let's go and move on to the Worlds of Weapons. Now, this is where it's a little bit different. And going in towards Empyrean, I could imagine that everybody had the same idea. We were going to use things like Empyrean of Andal. We were going to use things like Larkspur, Fluctus, Corvus, whatever. Um, Velocitus. We were going to use a lot of these weapons to annihilate enemies. However... Funny enough, it turned out a little bit different, and this is because of the new elementals in the game. So two weapons have definitely stood out. One of them is Singus, and one of them is Phaedra. And the biggest reason for this is because of the amount of status that they have. So the idea is that we're actually looking to debuff and strip. In the same way that we might use things like Corrosive, and we might use things like Viral in Warframe, we're essentially using things like Plasma and Particle to strip and debuff the enemy of their defenses, and then carry on with raw damage just shredding them down. These will out hit near enough any other weapon in here, unless you've got Rivens that can somewhat contend it. But Singus with no Riven is outperforming my Imperiate of Vandal with a Riven. It is that strong. So as for the lineup and what it is that I'm currently using in here, I'm not actually using Corrosive, so just ignore that part there. I'm actually using Radiation and Cold, and I'll explain that. Damage, multi shot, Fire Rate. Then I've got Combination of Electric plus Heat for Radiation. I've then also got extra in here towards radiation as well. And then I've also got cold. So majority of enemies that you will come across will actually have alloy armor. And alloy is weak, uh, weakened and exposed. And bonus damage that goes towards it is radiation by a 75%. And cold is also a 25%. If you can go ahead and put a uh, better mod in here, do go ahead and put the better version of this in here. Don't know if I can actually go and squeeze my polar, polar in. There we go. You can go and put this in here. But do go and keep in mind that this status is also really important. So I do want to go and keep that nice and high. And this is to do with the new elementals. So let's go ahead and break those down. There are seven new elementals within Empyrean content. <clears throat> there are your three physicals. Ballistic, Plasma, and Particle. And then there are your four base elements. Incendiary, Ionic, Frost, and Chemical. Now these might seem somewhat familiar if we actually go ahead and compare them, especially the elementals, if we compare them to what we already have in the game. Incendiary, Ionic, Frost, and Chemical. Incendiary is Heat. Ionic is Electric. Frost is Cold. And Chemical is Toxin. So you can see how they basically go ahead and relate. Now you don't see Chemical and uh, Frost and Ionic on here, but we can actually convert these values instead. So Cold would actually be Frost. Do you get the idea? Now, IPS, we know this as impact, puncture, and slash. The new value you want to understand is BPP, ballistic, plasma, and particle. So ballistic is a way of concussing the enemy. Uh, 
plasma is a way of debuffing their total armor and shields and slash is oh sorry slash a uh, particle is a way of debuffing just their overall health uh, well basically it's not so much debuffing their overall health it just means that once you apply it you can do more and more damage towards them okay so because plasma and uh, plasma and particle are so strong at debuffing the enemy and buffing what we do against them we want to run high status into them Status is very, very important. So don't worry about your criticals. They're not really doing an awful lot right now. Although critical can help because critical is bonus damage, we're mostly focusing on, on stripping them and debuffing them. So please go ahead and make sure that you are really on top of your uh, status related stuff. So this is a, a general just kind of Singus build here, radiation plus cold. And if we go down towards uh, Phaedra, uh, which would essentially be relatively near the same. Now, unfortunately, I'm actually kind of ranking my one up at the same time, so forgive me on that one. But you do still see I've got near enough the same loadout. I got the damage, I got the multi shot, I'll have the fire rate, I'll have the combination for radiation, I'll have cold in here if I can always squeeze it on in. And then I've got things like my ribbon in here. I've got damage, multi shot, and puncture. Happens to go and roll that just ever so slightly before the stream. Um, better values to go ahead and look for, or values to go ahead and look for in general for ribbons here. Damage, multi shot, status chance, electric, heat, cold. Any of these things will just go and help our overall damage output. So definitely look towards these values. Crit chance, crit damage are not the worst at the end of the day. At least we got 10% to work with here and 200% are a two times uh, critical multiplier. So we can actually work with critical ever so slightly, but it's only ever so slightly. Um, you would want to go ahead and start cracking in towards critical uh, mods in here as well if you can. Things like... Uh, uh, parallax uh, scope well, i can't get that in there at the minute but you're going to get the idea that puts up to 20 and if you get a good roll of critical in here you can go ahead and put it in there you've already got an awful lot of status so between the two you should be able to go and strip down enemies but again for the most part the reason why we run status is because of plasma and particle the physicals so in this case puncture and puncture and slash pay attention to these values as these are the values that we will be damaging the enemy mostly with okay so the way that that converts is impact is ballistic, puncture is plasma, slash is particle, heat is incendiary, electric is ionic, cold is frost, and toxin is chemical. Now you may be wondering, how does that work for combined elementals? What about things like radiation? Now it doesn't actually have anything with radiation. There's actually no proc that you can guarantee from radiation, from corrosive, from magnetic. But what you can go ahead and do is break down the two that is com combined, I was about to say combined, uh, the two that combine in towards radiation. So in this case, heat and electric, or in other words, it's gonna be incendiary and ionic. So the values that you're actually doing are going to be incendiary and ionic instead. And then as for the procs and everything else that you're putting in towards them, that's when it goes in towards it. So incendiary will be DOT and damage over time. And ionic will basically disable their controls. So essentially the, um, the control panel of each enemy pilot will slowly come to a halt and the pilot won't be able to fly. Okay, so hopefully that made you understand it. Um, as for arc melee... This is in a bit of a bad spot at the moment. Um, as for the weapons and so forth we're bringing on in here, as you could imagine, this is mostly towards like critical, but it's also good, good status as well. Centaur does seem pretty decent, and if anything, it always seemed like one of the better ones. I don't actually have a proper build for this at the moment, but again, just try and go with rule of thumb of what I've mentioned for Phaedra, what I've mentioned for Singus. Hopefully that will go ahead and help you out. But as of right now, Arc Melee, since Melee Phase 2, hasn't really been working very well. So do go ahead and keep that in mind, all right? Now, um, a few other things I had to mention here. If you guys are looking to train up Arcwings and you're thinking, okay, well, how can I go and get my Arcwing prepared for this? Let's say you're on console, or let's just say, you know, you want to go ahead and make sure that you've got a good Arcwing beforehand. If you head off to the planet Neptune and go ahead and do a node on there, which is a mobile defense node Arcwing called Cilicia. Do go ahead and do that one. It's one of the better ones to go ahead and train at. There's a good amount of enemies that will go ahead and come towards you and your teammates, providing you will defend the objective together. It's also a good way of actually keeping the team together. There isn't any big 
defense related missions and so forth within warframe uh, for arcwing there is an interception one which is endless but you're so far spread out from your team you won't really share the affinity so keep making sure that you go and do cilicia it's one of the better nodes to go ahead and do for now however you can also train arcwing during things like saturn proxima and veil vale proxima which are two uh, proxima planets within railjack and imperium themselves Another thing to go ahead and consider and keep in mind is you will go ahead and keep particular buffs on you. So if you want to go ahead and get buffs for your Phaedra and for your weapons, if you happen to use Wisp, the Warframe, and if you go and use her Reservoirs, so that's her one ability, and if you go and put them down just before you go ahead and leave the Railjack, so you pick up the buffs, you leave the Railjack, you get, in your, get into your Arcwing and you go out and start shooting, you will actually go ahead and receive those buffs at that point. So that also includes things like Smita Kavat, and Adaza Kavat. Adaza Kavat can give you an awful lot of critical. So these are also really good values going to take in there. Okay, so hopefully I've cleared up as much as I possibly can. Again, you can always go back on the video and pick up any of the builds that you do need, but rule of thumb or TLDR if you really want to use things like Amisha and Odanada. Use weapons like Singus and Phaedra, at least for now. You can use other weapons, you can use other Arcwings, but I'm just giving you like a better uh, experience of doing Railjack content with Arcwings. Arc Melee, I would just go and say use Centaur, but for the most part, you won't use it that often, at least as of right now. And as for the elementals and so forth that you're paying attention to, Puncture and Slash convert into Plasma and Particle. They are the ones to focus on, okay? Now, I hope you guys enjoy Empyrean. Do go get on out there, and hopefully this guide has helped you. Um, if you've got any questions, you can always uh, leave a comment down below inside the comment section, or you can always swing by my stream whenever I am live and ask away. I'll always go ahead and help you guys out whenever I possibly can. But thank you guys so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Uh, I'll catch you guys in the next video, and if you did like this one, drop a like. I appreciate it. I really do enjoy doing this stuff, and uh, I'm hoping um, this helps a lot of people out. Anyways, I'm out of here, guys. Have a wonderful night. Peace! <laughs>